What's up? In this video, we're gonna take a look at some hooks, and they've saved me so much time since discovering them, I don't even know how I didn't discover them earlier. So I think you deserve to know about them. We're gonna take a look at a couple of hooks together, just get a brief overview of what you can expect from this library, and then we're gonna implement pagination, a very important feature of modern web apps together. I think this is the most simple implementation of pagination I've ever done. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's try some of these hooks out together. This is the website, it's manteen.dev slash hooks, and then you get all the hooks that are in here, and there's a lot. If we scroll over here on the left hand side, you can see there's a bunch of hooks. We've got the category UI and DOM. If we scroll further, there's utilities like clipboard and document title, document visibility and so on, even the operating system we can get from these hooks. If that's something we wanted, it's never been something that I really needed in my projects, but I guess you could do that if you really wanted. And then just some lifecycle hooks that are, you know, more or less useful depending on your use case. But we're gonna start at the very top and just go through some hooks together. Take a look at what they do, how you can use them. And then finally, we're gonna implement some pagination together as well. It's super simple with the use pagination hook that Maintain UI provides you. We've got some examples like the counter, right? Everybody that learns React has done the counter to, to learn state, essentially. We've, we can increment this counter and decrement it. And in Maintain hooks, on every page, it's demonstrated how these hooks work. That's what I really like can see how the counter acts, reset it, increment. These are very, very simple hooks that I don't think will provide a huge benefit to you, to be honest, because chances are you probably already know how to do this. But then there are hooks that are simple as well, but just massive time savers. For example, the use debounce state. I've showed you in the past how to debounce state, and normally you would use something like low-debounce, um, wrap your functions in the debounce, but with this hook, it's pretty simple. So I'd say we just try the documentation all together, see how well it holds up in a debounce state. Now this is just a super simple example, um, but let's implement some debounce state. We can copy and paste the left side here, the value and then set value. It is the exact same syntax as the use state. So you're, you're already using what you're accustomed to, right? Just in a little bit of different fashion, which I really appreciate. Oops, I didn't want to open that. Which makes it super simple to work with these hooks because you already know how to work with them syntactically because they don't really differ. Then we can import the, the use debounce state and that is gonna be from at manteen slash hooks. That is the package we get all these hooks from. It's a extension of the Mantine UI library, um, but it's decoupled from it. So the hooks you can use without anything related to the original UI framework, that is Mantine, um, they have nothing to do which is with each other, but they do go well together if you decide to use them together. So we can just copy the first line. We are setting the default value of the state as an empty string and then debouncing each update by 200 milliseconds. Then we can have a input field in our JSX. Let's just have a regular input. And the default value is gonna default to, as we can see here on the left side, to the value. And then the onChange handler, we are still missing on this input. So let's add that. It's an onChange and that just takes something. We're gonna move this over to the next line just for it to be a bit easier to see. And this is gonna receive the event and then we can set the value. So this is just like setting a state, right? It's super intuitive to the e.target and then dot value, just as we already know from the state. Now let's save that and let's see what happens. The dev server is already running, which means we can open it up right here on the left-hand side and then go to slash pagination. This is the example I've already prepared for the pagination, which we're gonna implement together in a second. And we also need to declare this as a client component apparently. And let's give this input a border and a border of black just so we can see it. It's up there in the left hand side, we couldn't see it before. And then let's also display the current value somewhere in order for us to validate if the debounce actually works. Let's have an h1 of debounce state and then the value right here. And let's see if this works. Hello world. And it works. I can enter a lot of strings 
or chars and then it's gonna update the state based on a 200 second debounce and that is without us having to do anything else syntactically right this is just like setting a state with one extra parameter that you set into the state instead of going through the whole callback and wrapping your functions in a debounce as we did in the debounce video which i think is super amazing and saves you a lot of time if you use this a lot and now let's try pagination. It's a super prominent topic. Everybody wants to have pagination in their app, which, ma which makes sense, right? It's a very, very good feature, especially if you're dealing with a lot of data. It can save you a lot of computing resources to only show data to the user that they actually want to see and then on demand load more data. Now the documentation is very good, but it might look a bit overwhelming at first. So let's just work on the pagination together. And we will do that on this page right here. Now to implement pagination, you want to have some kind of results to display, right? That's the whole point of having pagination. We can get rid of the test that we did before. Let's get rid of the H1 and the input. And now let's mock out some results that we get from the database or something that we want to show the user as a result for the pagination. Let's call this mock results. It's going to be equal to an array. And this array just represents the data that you want to show to the user. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy over some values from the example I've already prepared, just some names so we get something to display on our page, but your content would go here. And then let's also determine an items per page constant, how many items we want to show per page. And for me, that's going to be five because these are 10 examples. So we get two pages in the end. And this example is going to highlight beautifully how these hooks save you time. Let's get into the main page component. And then in here, we are going to declare something that looks very close to an actual state. I'm going to disable GitHub Copilot because it doesn't really know what it's doing in this case. Let's call it visible results, the state, and also the set visible results as we do with use state, nothing out of the ordinary. That is going to be a normal use state that we are going to import from React. For some reason, the auto imports are not working. And by the way, if you're wondering if that ever happens to you, you can click um, or you can open the shift command and P, click developer reload window. That's going to reload your entire VS Code window. And then if we try the auto import of use state again, it mostly works. So that fixes the error if that ever happens to you. The visible results that we are going to display to the user are of type string array. And for the moment, we can give this a lot more space if you're working in TypeScript. And then these are going to be the mock results dot slice by default. And let's move this into a new line. And we are going to slice them beginning at zero and up to the items per page. So the default value of the state is going to be the first five values john jim jane jack and jill and then the rest are going to be shown during the pagination step of this component now if we take a look at what we can do to actually use the mantine hook it's the cons pagination is equal to use pagination that's what we're going to use and then we can pass the total and the initial page and the beauty of this syntax using the mantine hook at least is that it's all very well documented which you're going to see in a second we can say cons pagination is going to be equal to use pagination and we can already see the auto import from at 19 slash hooks and then here let's pass just as we saw a second ago the total and that is going to be the math dot ceiling so we are rounding up the value of the mock results that we have up here the the names dot length and then divided by the items per page so, so that's going to be um five divided by Oh no, that's going to be 10 divided by two. So we have two pages in total. And um, that's just what I wanted to split them up by. And the initial, oops, the initial page is going to, and we need to have a comma here. That's why it's not working. The initial page is obviously going to be one. And there needs to be an I right there. If we hover over this, we can see the page selected on initial render and it defaults to one. So if you wanted to have something different, um, you could enter it here. But just for verbosity, I want to have it in there. And then we also get an on change where we get the page as the index. So when the user goes to the next page, which is super simple, by the way, as you're going to see in a second, then this function is going to get called and give us a number of the current page. Now, let's display the results in our JSX first. Let's have a div in here. 
And inside of this div, we want to display all the current page items to the user. That's going to be a UL. And in here, we're going to have the visible results. We're going to map over them. Remember, that's the state we set up here. That is by default the first five names. And we get each result as the first parameter or argument and then the index. And then for the rendering, we're going to render an li, so a list element, which is going to have a key of, let's just have a shared key of result dash and then the index, so result one, result two, and so on. And then for what's going to be in this li, li is going to be the actual result. Now this result is going to get passed to us as the actual string. So that means it's going to be John, Jim, Jane, and so on that we are displaying right here as an li element. And then let's let's just render it out. Let's see what this currently looks like. Let's go to this page. And as we can see, we see John, Jim, Jane, Jack, and Jill. Let's move this into a side by side. It's going to be a bit easier for you to see. Give this just a bit more space. The problem is there is no pagination. And implementing that is super simple. Let's have a div right here. Give it a class name of flex and gap-4, just so it's a bit style, it's a bit easier to see. And then let's have two buttons in here. We can do that with button times two. It's an emmet abbreviation. And then the first button, we're gonna say prev for previous. And then next, this is just gonna be our, these are just gonna be our pagination buttons. And then in here comes the beauty of these Mantine hooks. We can say on click, and that's gonna be a pagination and then dot, and we can see there's a bunch of properties that we can call. We get the we get the active, the first, we get methods or functions, as we can see if we hover over this. On the right hand side, it's a function. We get the next, the previous, range, set page, if that's what we wanted. But in our case, obviously, that's gonna be the previous for the previous button. And then in the on click on this button, we're gonna say pagination dot next. Click save, and now we've got the two buttons right here. If we click next and previous, nothing happens just yet because we have not handled that in the on change. Because now we want to define the start and the end of the current page. And we can do that by saying const start. And the start is gonna be the page minus one and then times items per page. Similarly, the end is gonna be the start and then plus the items per page. Um, because that's how many we want to show. And then we're going to set the visible results that we are currently showing to the user to the mock results dot slice. And then we're slicing that from the start to the end. And that's all we need to do to implement pagination with this hook. If we click on next, as you could see, the names changed. If we click on previous, we get the previous names. It works beautifully. And if we wanted to, you know, display less items per page, we could do two. We just need to change one variable and it all works beautifully together in a very, very clean syntax due to the beauty of Mantine hooks assisting us in this case. And there are so many more hooks than I demonstrated to you just now. There's a lot, right? Uh, use full screen, for example, that allows us to go into full screen super easily. We can say toggle and full screen where we get the function to toggle it and then the current state of whether we are in full screen or not and then can just call that. It's super simple, saves you so much time, and that's why I think you deserve to know about these Mantine hooks. For now, that's all I want to share with you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, and bye-bye.